welcome back guys. Uh, I've got a new project. Oh yes, I've got a Focus RS, and this is gonna be a four drive, fully independent suspension with at least 80 degrees of steering, some mad drifting. It's almost gonna be like a four wheel drift trike. When you're drifting a trike, you, you've got that amazing amount of steering and you can just pull it back whenever, and it, it's lovely. So yeah, I'm gonna try and squeeze that sort of theory into this and hopefully it'll work. I've got a few ideas, but yeah, let's see how it goes. All right, so there she is, guys. It's got folding wing mirrors, oh yeah. It's got a lovely seat. We've got an ignition with a key, a metal key. I've only just noticed this, but it has actual lights. Oh yes. They're not great, but... Oh, they're not too bad. All right, well here it is up on the table. Before I cut the body, so I'm gonna lengthen it through the doors here somewhere, I'm gonna liberate an engine so that before I start getting plastic cutting happy, I've got an engine to sort of plonk in there and um, yeah, size things up a bit. It's lovely. I have high hopes for this engine. Alright, well, I don't know about you, but that's made me feel a whole lot better about it. Um, it's mainly just so I can sort of handle it and not get covered in crap at the moment, but yeah. Oh yes. Bit of lacquer. She's a good one. I think now the next stage is to strip the electrics out of the body and then sort of cut it in half somewhere and see how far we can extend it before it starts to look a bit goofy, but yeah. Let's crash on. So there we go guys, everything is stripped out of it. All the electrics, all the motors, all the, the loom that runs underneath there and all the subframe and everything. Um, even taking the dash out just to see how much room I've got up the front there. But yeah, I was hoping it would seem a bit bigger than that, but yeah, beggars can't be choosers. So I think I'm gonna sort of cut this whole inside tub out of here all the way around and then yeah, cut it through this part of the door, the door opens here. Cut through this sort of sill and then all the way around this tub. Um, and then we'll see how we're looking. Well, I won't be sending that back.
All right, so there we go. That's sort of how long it's gonna be. I cut it and added seven inches in there. I don't think I can really stretch it any more than that because I just don't want to ruin the sort of the scale between the front and the rear. The doors, the doors, I'm gonna have to remake at a later date, but now I can start to measure between the center of the axles there and where the engine, engine will live sort of thing. And then we can get rid of the body for a while, smash on with the frame. I've got several mounting points here for the engine. I've got one right on top, one here, one there, and two on the back. One of them's where the actual rear swing arm used to pivot. Yeah, I'm not gonna use this top one or this this upper front one here. I'm just gonna use these these three, and then the plan is to sort of have the engine so it can lift out the front of the frame, so it'll just sort of pop out fairly easily, but yeah, let's see how we go. So I've got my CAD file here. So all I've got to do is upload it to the grinder. Lightweight, that's literally anti-weight. So that's like helium. Good, good. So there we have it. That's one half of the sort of subframe, I guess you call it front subframe. And yes. Now I have to make another. Joy! Okay, so that doesn't look too bad. Uh, now that's complete and I sort of know where the front axle is going to be, I can measure back 800 mil to where the rear axle is going to be and then plot out or cut the length of the, the chassis parts. But yeah, let's crack on.
Okay, so there you have it. That's sort of as far as I'm going to go with the chassis at the moment, but um, yeah, I think it's suspension time. Um, hub bearing housings made up. I found this 22mm socket which I will use for the um, putting the drive through to the wheel here uh, and that actually fits in there perfectly so I just weld a flange on there to, to bolt on to the wheels and then on this shaft here this UJ which will drive the wheel I'll weld several nuts on there and then uh, put a thread on the end and a nut and that will hold the whole assembly together um, very similar to what I did in the last build but um, yeah, a bit more simplified this time because the, the socket perfectly fits in there, but um, yeah, these other ones will make sense very soon. Okay, so there we have it. We've got our wheel bolted to our front hub assembly here. Um, the next part of this is to try and mount this other UJ. I'm gonna try and do like a like a double carden setup here, um, which is gonna be a bit tougher than usual because a, a normal double carden joint has some linkage between the yokes here, uh, and that allows the, the carden joint to sort of stay time together, or they have um, the kingpin of the steering assembly sort of roughly um, where it needs to be um, and that sort of works in most applications but unfortunately because this is going to be independent suspension 
uh, I can't use either of those techniques so I'm gonna have to make a like an external linkage to support this other shaft uh, and that's where this bearing comes into play that will live on this shaft um, and then there'll be yeah a link coming off of here and then a link coming off of the hub and then a, a couple of little ball joints there to hold it together and um, hopefully this will work I think the geometries will be quite crucial but yeah we'll make it up as we go along thingamabob three ufra jammers similar to the thingamabob um, but opposite so completely different ufra jammers So check it out guys, look at what we have here. Um, so yeah, this is the double cardan joint. So we've got the two UJs in there and then we've got this external frame which holds the joints in position as you as you move sort of lefty righty here. But yeah, I'm amazed it actually worked. What a beauty. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the um, sort of the central yoke there is sort of speeding up and slowing down every 90 degrees, but the the output shaft there is staying, you know, relatively constant. So that's pretty good, tasty. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll um, catch you later. Wee! -hoo!